Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and to today's video. Um, and welcome to all my new friends. We've got a little flurry of new friends here, so I'm really happy to have you all. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Anna. I am a knitter and I live in Seattle, Washington, which is on the west coast of the United States. Um, like Northwest, almost up by Canada. Um, and I love to knit and just make things in general. Um, I like to sew and crochet and do little crafty things. So, um, yeah, I've been doing it all my life. I really enjoy it. Um, and it just brings me a lot of happiness. But this video and this channel is going to be mainly about my knitting. So that's what I'm going to talk you through today is kind of all the projects I've been working on throughout the month of November. Um some projects that I finished, some projects that I've been working on, and then some um, supplies that I bought to work on new projects. So that's what today's video is gonna be. Apologies in advance if there's some noise. There is a construction site across the street and I live on like a kind of a busy road. And I'm like right at the front of my house because I have my Christmas decorations out and I thought it would be cute in the background. So sorry for the background noise. Hopefully my microphone will help it not get picked up too terribly, but we will see. Um, all right, so with that, I'm gonna talk you through. First, we're gonna start with some finished items. So, oh, actually, no. First, I wanna talk to you about what I'm wearing. This is my Paloma sweater. Stand up so you can see it. It's the Paloma sweater by Espos Co. It's like a cropped, straight arm, high neck sweater. Um, it's free pattern, and this was actually the very first sweater that I ever made. So um, I finished this probably, I think I started it in January of 2020 and finished it maybe in like March or April. So like kind of at the beginning of COVID, but I started it before COVID. Um, but yeah, I really like it. It has these twisted rib details on the arms and twisted ribbing on the sleeves and the neck. The neck is actually quite long, but I knitted this in cashmere, so it's a little bit drapey. So I fold it over. Otherwise it would be really floppy. Um, it's cropped. The sleeves are straight, no decreases. Um, there's a lot of mistakes in this sweater um, because it was my first one, like the short rows in the back. Don't lay flat. I don't know, they're a little bit wonky and like the tension is a little off in a few places, but I love it. It's really soft and cozy and it was my first ever sweater. So I really enjoy it. It's just like a good loungewear piece because it's a lovely soft cashmere and it's actually a cashmere sweat it's made from yarn from a sweater that i bought at a thrift store that was super felted well like felted in a couple places so i pulled it apart and made it into this and i like i love it i wear it all the time it's very cozy and the pattern is great it's super easy to follow um i really like espastry coke patterns i think you'll see that <laughs> i have a couple here actually that i have worked on or am working on and they're really easy to follow, very beginner friendly, and really high quality. So highly recommend those. Okay, now I will take you into my finished objects. Um, my first one is this little sweater for my niece, Millie. Um, this is the Good Old Raglan pattern by Twisted Knitwear. Um, in the size, I think this is two to three years. She just turned two, so I made it a little bit bigger hoping that she would fit it longer because kids grow fast and so when you knit things for them they don't get to enjoy them for that long um but yeah so this is a little sweater i made for my niece and then i embroidered her name on it in a chain stitch with just some waist yarn it's actually the same this green yarn um for my sweater so i embroidered that on there it turned out really cute i'm very pleased with it i feel like it looks very professional like it would be from one of those little french children's clothing boutiques um, so yeah, I think it's very cute. And um, I knit this, this is like a 100% wool. I'm pretty sure it's superwash. My mom gave me this yarn like years ago and I've used it. She gave me a lot of it and I've used it for quite a few projects. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's superwash. It is, it's like a sport weight yarn and the pattern calls for DK. So my gauge is a little bit tight on this project, but I think it's okay because it's quite stretchy and my niece is quite small for her age, so I think she will still be able to fit this for at least the rest of this winter and hopefully next fall as well. Um, it is kind of a lightweight sweater though, which is good. You can kind of see it's kind of airy and thin, which is good because she lives in Texas, so it's not that cold. 
But yeah, it turned out really well. I think this ended up using about 200 grams of yarn. So um, not a whole lot. It was pretty fast. It's a lot of stockinette, which can be boring, but it's pretty fast and it turned out very cute. And I can't wait to give it to her. I'm going to go see her actually next weekend. I'm going to be in town for a wedding and I'm going to stay with my sister and her family. And I can't wait to give it to her. And she knows that I'm giving it to her and she keeps asking me on FaceTime. Um, did you make me a sweater? So I can't wait to bring it to her and see her cute little self wearing it. Um, I really like this pattern, the good old raglan by Twisted Knitwear. It's a kid's sized raglan basic sweater. Um, I think it goes from like zero to three months all the way up to like maybe like 10 years. So it's got a good size range in there. I'm, I've made it before in the one size up. So the three to four years for my other niece. Um, a couple months ago. I think I might have shown it to you before in a previous video, but I really like the pattern. It's very easy to follow, lots of sizes. The original pattern um, has stripes in it, so there are like pat instructions to do the striping. Um, I have not done the stripes in either of the ones I made, but yeah, it turned out really good. I think the raglan details look really nice. I did make a little mistake on the raglan back here, but I don't think anyone will be able to tell except for me that that happened. So very cute, very happy with it. Um, and that's my first finished object. My second finished object, um, I have a couple small ones that I wanna talk you through before I talk you through the big one. So um, this hat, which I had not cast on the last time you saw me, um, but I had talked about it. This is the Belfie hat by Espostri Co. It's like a cabled, just a cabled hat with a folded over one by one rib brim. Um, and I made this in an alpaca yarn. This was also a sweater that I had taken apart. Um, and I actually used one strand of this along with a strand of 100% wool in my diamonds and pearls sweater. Um, I'll put a picture of it here. It's a pattern by Pop Knit. And I used one strand of that and had dyed it with turmeric to make it yellow. Um, and then I had a good bit of this left over and it was kind of yellow and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the yellow. So then I decided that I wanted to do some more natural dyeing experiments with walnuts. I have a walnut tree over my driveway um, and walnuts have a lot of tans in them so they dye really well. So this was the result. It was basically white beforehand and it now is this really pretty like warm brown. It's like a, it's like a maple kind of color. Um, and the white heather you see, I think there's like a nylon or something core in the yarn with the alpaca. So it makes this kind of heather look and it turned out really pretty. It is a little snug for me. I have a big head and this pattern only comes in one size. So when I wear it, I'm not going to put it on because I have my hair up in a clip, but it looks pretty stretched and it's pretty tight to my head, um, which I don't love. I like a hat that's a little bit looser and like a little bit taller than my head. So it's not like a skull cap. Cause I think that just makes my big head look even bigger, but yeah. So I think I may end up gifting this. I'm not sure who I'm going to gift it to yet. Maybe I'll give it to my little sister, Julia. Do you have a big head? Would you fit this? I don't know. Do you want it? Um, it's really cute. It turned out well. I knit it almost pre pretty much to pattern. I had about mm, probably like 50 yards less than I needed to knit it perfectly to pattern. So it's actually a little bit shorter than the pattern would call for. That's probably only about like half an inch to an inch longer in the pattern. Um, but yeah, this is that. It's very cute. It's very cozy. The yarn is super soft and I like the just like simple cables. So this was my Belfie hat. I would definitely make this pattern again. It was really nice, super quick. The longest part honestly was the one by one rib because it's five inches long, which is a lot of one by one rib. No matter how fast or good of a knitter I get, one by one rib is just always gonna be slow. It takes forever and it's slow, but yeah, it's really squishy and nice. So there's that. Anyway, here's my hat. I need to have a really long end here that I need to figure out what to do with. But anyway, there it is. Very cute, very soft, very lovely. My next little finished object, which I also need to weave in an end, are just these little baby mittens. I have a friend who, she had her baby in July, um, but she is from Indiana and she's going back to Indiana for Christmas for like a, a whole month to be with her family. Um, and her little girl is now like four or five months old. 
So I figured she could probably use some little mittens to keep her warm when they're in Indiana and going on walks and stuff and she sees the snow for the first time. So these are just these cute little mittens. They are a free pattern on Ravelry. I do not remember the designer's name or the name of the pattern, um, but I will link it in the down bar so that you can see it. I'll link everything that I talk about um, in the down bar so that you can refer back to it at any point if you need to. Um, but yeah, so these are just little Silbu Rose mittens. This pink is like a, it's also something that I got from my mom from her stash years ago, like many years ago. Um, it's a wool blend of some sort. And then this white is just the natural undyed Irish wool that I think I used. I used it in my sister's sweater number five. And I also used it in my core shop and sweater. So that's what these are made with. They're worsted weight. They're net on 3.5 millimeter needles. So the fabric is nice and dense and warm. Um, I feel like my floats, I caught my floats in this, which I don't usually do because I didn't want her little baby fingers to get stuck in it. So that's what they look like on the inside. Kind of a mess, but you know, that's what happens when you catch your floats. Um, but they have this really pretty like stripey pattern on the palm. And then this is the outside of the hand, this lovely little Silbu Rose. So yeah, there's these, very cute. For little baby hands. Um, and these were super, super quick to knit. I think like the color work part probably took me like an hour, hour and a half tops. And then it's just ribbing on the other one. So you could make a pair of these in like four hours, super easy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give those to her tonight. So I'm excited to pass those along to their new home. Um, I have one more smaller finished object that I actually don't have with me because I have already gifted it on to its new home. Um, but I made a Tilly the hair, which I will put a picture of the pattern and then my version of it. It is from the book Knitted Animal Friends, which I have talked about previously. I think I talked about it in my August video, um, but it's from that book. I don't remember the author's name, but I will link it down below for you. Um, and I made Tilly the hair. So it's a little bunny rabbit, like soft toy. Um, it has a dress and then in the pattern she also has a cardigan. I have not knit the cardigan yet, um, but I plan to. I just didn't have a whole lot of time. I made it for the sweet little girl who actually lives next door to me, who I babysit for quite a lot. And it was her first birthday um, last week. So I made that for her and she already really likes it. So that makes me feel so happy that she loves to snuggle on it and give it kisses. Um, but it turned out super cute. Um, all the pieces are knit flat and then mattress stitched, which was kind of annoying, but I got really good at mattress stitch, <laughs> sewing them all up and stuffing them and everything. And it turned out really cute and I'm very pleased with it. And I would definitely make um, another toy from that book. I actually got it from the library, from my local library. So um, if I want to make something else from it, I'll have to check it out again, but it turned out very cute. I'm really happy with it. Um, and the little clothes are just adorable. I really liked the um, stitch pattern on the dress with the like caught floats. I don't know, it was really pretty. Um, I would definitely use it on something for myself. So that was really fun to knit. It took a little bit of while, a little while because you have to knit all the pieces and then seam them up and sew it all together. But it was a fun project to work on. Um, so yeah, that was my fourth finished object of the month. And my last finished object of the month is the lovely what is this called? Cathedral Dome Sweater by Kristen Viola Odegaard. You've seen this maybe once before and I know I've talked about it quite a bit. Um, so here she is in all her glory. It is a colorwork yoke pattern um, and I used Plotulopi for mine, which is the unspun Icelandic um, pencil roving. And I held two strands of it together because it's like a fingering to a sport weight on its own and then you get like a DK worsted kind of weight out of it if you hold two strands together. Um, I got gauged perfectly on this project and it calls for a DK. So you can kind of see, I guess, on the floats on the inside how thick two strands of the yarn held together are. Um, here you go. So you can kind of see that. But yeah, so that's this. There are, I think it looks really pretty. Um, I really like the colors that I chose. This is Plotilope in the shade Marsh Heather 1420, I think is the number for the brown. 
the beige is ivory ivory heather no light beige heather it's one of those two i think it's ivory and then the green is the color clover green heather um and i really like the color contrast i especially like the contrast Whoop. between the brown and the white i think it's very striking the hem just looks really pretty um, so yeah, it has this colorwork yoke and then it carries on to the sleeve cuffs and the hem of the sweater. And yeah, this took me a while to make for a couple reasons. Um, I had originally bought, I had three plates of the main color and then one plate each of the two contrast colors. And then I realized I was going to have to hold it double. So I was going to need more. So I knit the whole brown part of the yoke and probably to about here, like two thirds of the way done with the green on the yoke. And I ran out of yarn. So I went to a local yarn store here in Seattle, Acorn Street Shop. Um, they are in Northeast Seattle, very cute little store. They have all sorts of nice stuff, but they have Plotulopi there. So I bought the green color and then I finished the yoke and finished the sleeves and I was working my way through the body and I thought maybe I was not gonna have to buy any more and I got to about here on the body and I ran out of the main color. And then at that point I was like, I'm probably gonna run out of the brown as well, so I should get more of that. So I started looking around online to see where I could find it for the cheapest because at my local yarn store, one plate of Plotilopi is about $11, which is kind of feels like a lot to me. I know it's not really that much, but if I could find it for less, I was going to. So I looked around and I found it online for, I think it was $4.99 a plate from the Icelandic store, which is a store in Iceland that sells uh, all sorts of Icelandic wool. Well, they sell all of the Istex brand wool. So Lopi, or um, Let Lopi, and Elephas Lopi, and Plochi Lopi, and everything. Um, so I bought it on there and ordered it from Iceland. And it took a while to get here because it had to ship from across the world. And when it got here, I realized that I had ordered I had ordered the wrong beige. So I had ordered this beige and I needed this beige. They are very different. <laughs> um, they, I mean, they don't look that different, but they are different. So um, I had to go back to my local yarn store and buy another plate of the main color. And then I was able to finish. So from the Icelandic store, I ordered this beige and then another plate of the brown. And... So yeah, I got the beige from my local yarn store, finished the body, um, used a little bit of that brown on the bottom and then finished it up. And I finished all my edges with the Italian bind off. So it's nice and stretchy and pretty. It takes forever. And it's uh, Italian bind off with Plotilopi is kind of annoying because it starts to like pulling it through all the stitches, just like really wears the yarn and it starts to kind of fall apart, but it was worth it in the end. Um, and I really like the way that it looks as it is. I have some issues with the fit of the finished garment. So I, some of them are my fault, some of them aren't. So this pattern did not have short rows in it originally and I added some in um, just from another pattern that I had um, to make the back stand up a little bit higher. And I took them, I didn't realize, but they kind of come around the front and I wish that I had kept them in the back a little bit more. Um, so they weren't as visible. I don't think anyone will notice any of these fit issues that I have with it. I don't think anyone else will notice, but I notice. So it does bother me a little bit. Um, the neck on this is also kind of wide. It sits pretty wide on my shoulders. Um, so it's almost like a boat neck, which I don't love. So I think I may, it's just single rib. I may pick up the edge, knit, six or eight more rounds and then fold it over and tack it down and see if that will pull the neck in a little bit maybe i could put some elastic or something in it just i just feel like it's sliding off my shoulders when i wear it um and then the other thing issue that i have with the fit is the arms so you can kind of tell that the arms are really wide it take it the arms are like set probably seven of these pattern repeats around on each side um, and they just look really wide when you compare them to the body. Like even here, that looks really wide. And when you wear it, when I wear it, it kind of sticks out a little bit because of the floats on the inside. There's so much fabric, um, like all of this, the floats, the layer of actual knitted fabric and then the floats just add some bulk here that makes it stick out when you're wearing it. 
Um, and I don't love that. I think it looks a little bit strange. So I, I think if I were to make this again, I would do one less pattern repeat in the arms. So I would take, instead of separating all of these pattern repeats for the arms, I would separate one fewer and put that into the body. Um, Cause the body, compared to how loose the sleeves are, how much excess fabric there is on the sleeves, there's not like a proportionate amount of excess fabric on the body. So it just looks a little bit off. Um, and looking back at the pictures in the book, you can kind of tell that that's it, that that's the fault of the pattern. Fault is subjective, but like that is the way that the pattern is written. You can kind of see in the pictures as well that she gets that like flare on the sleeve. So that's a little upsetting. Um, and it kind of bothers me, but James is trying to talk me off that ledge. He's like, no one else will notice. I don't notice. Like it's not a big deal but it's kind of a big deal to me. So I'm not gonna rip it back. I think it would be basically impossible to rip this back because it's flotulopi and I've blocked it. The fibers have like melted together even more and like they haven't felted, but they're just, I just think it would be a fool's errand to try and rip this back. So I'm going to wear it and I'm going to love it. And it's very warm and I like the fabric. Um, actually really like the fabric. It's not super drapey, but it does have a little bit of give to it. And you can see it was a lot stiffer before I washed it. Um, but with washing and everything, it's actually quite smooth. I mean, smooth is also subjective. It's it's prickly. I'm not going to tell you that it's not prickly. Um, so if you're sensitive to wool and you want to work with Plotilopi, wear a t-shirt underneath it. Um, I'm not super sensitive, but I wore this this morning and it was starting, like as soon as I got a little bit warm, it was starting to prickle a little bit. So I think it would be more comfortable with the shirt underneath. Um, but it is very warm and it's really pretty. Like the pearl bumps in the contrast I like a lot like boho style of knitting they're really pretty um so it's pretty I'm, I'm proud of it I worked really hard on it and spent quite quite a lot of time I also added some short rows in the back and my tension is a little bit off you can see I wrote out here um no one else is going to notice but me but I added some short rows in the back to help with the fit and I'm glad that I did that um so yeah it turned out nice I'm I'm happy with it. It'll be very warm and cozy, like a good layering piece for the cold months we have here. I like the fabric. I, I'm excited. I'm glad that I have so much. Like I have quite a lot of Lopi left over. I have this whole plate of the wrong color that I bought, and I have probably like 65 grams of the main color that I used. Probably like in like 70 of the green and 80 of the brown. So I can make a whole another sweater out of those, like with stripes or something on it. And I actually. I either want to make like the arrow sweater by Petite Knit or there's a sweater from Unit Toronto that I really like. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll put a picture of it here that uses three colors and it's kind of like color blocked on the top and then there's a thin band of color work and then color blocked on the bottom. I think it's really pretty and it would work for these colors really well. Um, I just like these, especially the browns and the beiges. Sorry, I'm just, I don't want to take them out of this plastic bag that I'm storing them in, but I, I can't tell. But the browns and the beiges, there we go. It's just like a really pretty neutral color story. So I like that. And all in all, this turned out fine. Um, I have some issues with it, but I'm going to try and fix them. And here it is. So very pleased with that in the long run. And it's very squishy and cozy. It would make a great pillow. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, that's it for finished objects for now. Um, next, I'm going to talk you through some of my works in progress and yeah, I'll sprinkle acquisitions in there because some of the yarn that I've bought I'm currently using. So um, to start, I will talk you just very quickly. Oh my gosh, this is a tangled mess. Hold on. Okay, to start, I will just mention very briefly that I am still working on my Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. Her name, her, it, on Ravelry, it's Ozetta Knitwear. I think her name is Haley. Um, so it's a half fisherman's rib cardigan. I'm about halfway down the body and uh, like a third of the way through the first sleeve. I've probably made, I think I've done a good chunk of sleeves since I saw you last. Maybe only one decrease. I've decreased. I don't think I had decreased when I last saw you. So. I think I've done about this much. It's not, I like the, I'm excited to have this finished product of this project. The actual process, I'm not enjoying that much. Um, 
And I don't know if it's because I've knit quite a lot of Half Fisherman's Rib lately, and so I'm just tired of it. When you knit it in the round, you have to do a whole round of purl, which definitely slows me down. So, and then if it's knit flat, then it's, you know, I don't know, it's just a lot of stitches and it takes a long time. So it's very slow going. Last month I said I wanted to finish it by the end of the year. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. I do have quite a long road trip coming up. I'm driving to see my pa parents in California for Christmas and it's like a 13 hour drive. So I'm hope hopeful that I can make a good dent on this on that drive when I'm just stuck with it and <laughs> have nothing else to do. And maybe my mom can help me with it because I'm just starting to get tired of it. Not tired of it, but I'm just not super motivated to work on it. Um, but I am excited to have it in my wardrobe. I'm knitting this with Patton's Classic Wool Merino, which is a discontinued yarn, but I got it for a super good deal um, over the summer at a yarn store in Utah. Um, and it's very pretty, it's super soft, worsted, just super smooth, very like light and airy yarn. Um, very, very soft. I think it will pill quite a bit when I actually wear it, but that doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm not that put off by pilling, you just take them off. So yeah, um, it's gonna grow and be really nice and cozy and oversized once it's washed. The only thing I will say about the pattern, overall pretty well written, there's some good support videos and everything. There's a couple places where it's confusing or just like the translation wasn't great, but the one thing that I will say is that the way that the decreases are written, I think the arms, if I, if I did it perfectly to pattern, the arms would be super long. Um, so I've done two decreases at the way, the rate that it's written in the pattern and I'm for the next set of decreases, I'm going to shorten the distance because otherwise my sleeves when I wash it are going to be like off my fingertips. So I have to make that adjustment, but it should be fine and hopefully it will make it go a little bit faster. So that's where I'm at on this chugging away slowly. Um, I just have so many things that I want to work on right now. And because this isn't exciting me, I'm not going to force myself to work on it because I don't want to put myself off. So it's happening slowly but surely. I'm getting there on that guy. Um, my next work in progress is another sweater for another niece. I am making the Ingrid cardigan by, I can never remember who anyone's names are. I don't remember, but it's by, I think a yarn company actually. And I will put a picture of the finished object here. It's a pretty little cardigan. It's just a basic cardigan with these little like lace flower details in it. Um, I'm making this in the 12 months. So like one year old size, my niece is a little younger than that, but I wanted again to make it a little bit bigger so she could wear it for longer. Um, and I'm making this with this yarn. So this is yarn that I got from Color Mart, which I heard about through Tiffany Liu, who was another knitting YouTube star. Um, and they sell, um, I think their tagline is like luxury mill end yarn. So basically they sell cones of yarn. This came on a cone. I just wound it off the cone recently. Um, but they sell cones of yarn that are like excess material that they buy from like actual garment making companies. So like, I'm trying to, how do I explain this? Like mass market ready to wear garment making companies. So like, uh, I don't think they actually buy from like H&M or anything, but like those companies need yarn to machine knit their items, put them together and then sell them in the store. Um, and sometimes they have excess yarn from those processes. So this company buys that and then sells it on to you on cones. And most of their cones come in 150 grams. So this is an 150 gram cone of yarn from Color Mart. This is a one off yarn. So they do have like recurring stock that they, they have all the time, but not this one. This is a one off. It's a wool and mohair blend. And just, I think it's undyed and just this cream color. Um, and it's a DK weight. It looks a little thinner than that right now. I think it's because it has a good amount of spinning oil in it. It just hasn't been washed. And so the bloom is not quite there yet. Um, and you can see like with 50% mohair, it should have more halo than that. So I think it will bloom quite a lot when it's washed, but it's 150 grams of DK weight yarn. So it's about 490 yards or maybe it's meters yards, 490 yards. Um, so that should be more than enough for this project. And I'll probably have some leftover as well. Maybe I'll make a hat or something with it, depending on how much I have. Um, but I've knit like a third of the sweater and I have probably like a good hundred grams left if not more. So 
yes. <laughs> All that to say, I'm making this cardigan um, with a wool mohair blend, DK weight. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles to make it. Um, and the ribbing is on three millimeter needles. So it's got a twisted rib. It's a free pattern, so I can talk about it. Um, it's got a twisted rib at the bottom and then these pretty little, just like basic yarn over lace flower details on it. Um, and this is the body of the sweater up to the sleeve. So it's knit bottom up um, and I've knit all of this and now I have to cast the sleeves on separately, knit those bottom up, both of them, and then attach it all together and then decrease to the end. So this bit has been knit flat so far. I've gotten really good at purling because I've been knitting a lot of things flat lately. So my purling is getting much better. I used to have an issue with my tension. I would row out like all the time. So basically my, I don't, I think it was my purl rows were a little bit, like the stitches were a little bit longer than my knit rows. So it looked like almost striped. Um, and you can kind of see it in a couple places on here where my tension is not perfect. Maybe you can't, but I can. Um, and so I changed the way that I purl and it's actually helped quite a lot with keeping that tension a little bit more even. I'm waiting for three millimeter DPNs to come in the mail, which is actually kind of like a really hard size to find around here. In America, they don't really sell three millimeter needles. You can get a 2.75 or a 3.25, but it's really hard to find three. So I had to order some DPNs on eBay for to do the sleeves because I used a 16 inch circular for the rib, but that's too short to do magic loop for the sleeve cuffs and there's not gonna be enough stitches for me to do it all the way around. So I ordered DPNs, they're coming in the mail, they should be here by the end of the week. And then I can do the sleeves. I have to kind of finish this kind of quickly. I'm going, like I said, to see my niece. Both my nieces live in the same area. So when I go visit them, I need to take them these gifts. And so I need to finish this in the next week, two weeks. But anyway, um, it should be fine. It's gone pretty quick. I think I only cast this on maybe two weeks ago and I haven't been working. I worked on quite a lot of other things at the same time. So I have a good way to go on this, um, but I shouldn't have any trouble finishing it. So um, yeah, very happy with this. It's very cute and I'm excited to see my little niece in it. And the yarn smells sheepy, which is delightful because I love a sheepy yarn. Oh, that's something I wanted to mention about the Plotilopi. Um, rewinding a little bit, the Plotilopi had a very sheepy smell when I first knit with it before I washed it. Um, but after washing, a lot of that's gone away. It still smells like wool. It has that like slightly sheepy if you're really sniffing it, but it's not just like putting it off like a perfume like it was before. Like my hands were, would smell sheepy after knitting with it for a while. Now that it's washed, it's not gonna do that anymore. I will say something that I noticed when I was washing the Cathedral Dome Plotilopi sweater, the water was really brown which is not something I'm used to. So I don't know if it was like dye coming out of that brown yarn or if it was just like lanolin and oils getting washed out of the yarn, but it was kind of gross. So word to the wise, if you wash your plotilopi and the water gets gross, maybe it's normal, maybe it's not. Let me know if that's ever happened to you before. I'd be curious to hear people's experience, but yes, that was a tangent. But anyway, now we're back to whips. I have two more. Um, that I'm working on. This is just a little sock and it's on some waist yarn because I made my husband try it on. It's actually for my dad for Christmas and I've never knit socks for a men's size before and I'm freestyling these socks because I couldn't find a pattern that I liked. So I made James try them on last night to see if they would fit and I think they will. They're 80 stitches, which I don't know if that's too much. I can't decide. I had start I started them and got like this this long, maybe a little longer on 70 stitches and that was too small. So then I went to 80 stitches. That might be too big. I don't want to rip it back though. So I'm just going to go for it and keep going. So yeah, it's a three by two rib on the cuff. And then I'm just going to do some little like pearl bump details on the, on the legs, really subtle, but kind of like biscuit sock inspired. If you know that pattern, it's a free pattern of DK weight socks. These are fingering, but that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. I'm knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles, 80 stitch circumference. I may, the cuff fit him pretty well. I may decrease on the leg a little bit to make him fit better. That could have helped. Um, and then this is just a fingering weight gray. I think it's superwash yarn that I had in my stash. This is actually the same yarn that I used for Tilly the hair, the little bunny that I made. Um, 
And yeah, it's a really nice, cozy, soft, squishy yarn. So I think it'll make some nice socks. And I have like a month to finish these for my dad. So that should not be an issue. I only started these like two days ago and they're coming along. So I will keep trucking away on these. And then my last work in progress is another shawl, which you might be astonished to hear because I have on this podcast before said that I am not a shawl person, but then I made my camel ombre shawl, which I talked about a couple episodes ago. I'll link that one for you so you can see. Um, but I wear it all the time. So I have eaten my words about shawls and I am now making another one. Um, I am also in the middle of a row, so I can't show it to you all that well, but this is another Espace Tricot pattern. It's called the Sunday morning shawl and it's pretty simple. It's just, um, like bands of stockinette and then these little twisted rib bands. Um, and it's a triangular shawl. So this is the top, which should be longer and then it's going to go down to a point. So it'll just be a triangle. Um, and you increase on every round and it just grows quite quickly. So, um, yeah, I started this two days ago and I've already almost, I'm like halfway through the third stockinette band. So it's going really quickly. I'm sure it will go a little more slowly as I get more and more stitches, but I really like it. I think it's going to be super fun. Um, and very versatile. I really like this color, which I will talk to you about in just a second, but um, yeah, I like it a lot. These are some stitch markers that I made with beads that I found at Hobby Lobby. I think I talked to you about them in the last video. Um, yeah, and it has these, like, it's almost like a raglan in the middle, so it makes this really pretty. It looks almost like a slip stitch, but it's from the increases in the middle and then the twisted rib bands. And you increase on the outside, which I can't really show you. Okay, so you increase, it's a free pattern, so I'll talk to you about it. You increase with the yarn over every round on both sides for the top band, which gives you this like garter band. And then you do increases in the middle on the right side. So it's gonna grow into a lovely like triangle, but like kind of like an arrow almost shape. Um, yeah, so that's coming along lovely and I'm very excited to have it. Okay, the yarn is a little stiff, but that is because this is a tapestry wool. So this, yarn I got in a lot that I will talk to you about in a minute but it is the Busilla tapestry wool which is a vintage yarn which if you have watched any of my videos before you know that I really like vintage yarn oh, the construction workers across the street keep throwing me off so yeah it's a vintage yarn I have used this yarn before um I have I used some Busilla tapestry wool in another color for my luminous sweater which I showed in the last two episodes, I believe, which is a big color work yoke sweater that I test knit for Jules Coco, which by the way, the pattern is now live on Ravelry. So I will link that in the down bar for you. But if you've seen that sweater, I'll put a picture of it here, but the pattern's live on Ravelry, excellent written, excellent, excellently written pattern, really enjoyed knitting it. Um, it was my first test knit. It was a really good experience and I would highly recommend that pattern. So patterns live, Go check it out if you're interested. But anyway, another tangent. Um, I like this yarn a lot and it softened up quite a lot when I washed it. So I'm not super concerned about it being a little bit stiff. Plus it's a shawl, so it's mostly for warmth. Um, so it's okay if it's not super soft. Um, and it's kind of, it's a little drapey, but not that drapey. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so yes. Basila Tapestry Wool, this is the color 90. This is discontinued, so I don't think it really matters, but if you're interested, it's the color 90. It's kind of like this. It honestly reminds me, so Stacy from Stress Knits has knit like a million of the half and half triangles wraps, and she really likes the color Pale Mushroom from Pearl Soho, and that's what this kind of reminds me of. I've never seen it in, real, in person, but it's kind of like a beigey, browny pink color it really wants to focus on my face there we go it's kind of like a beigey browny pink and it pulls different tones out of it depending what it's against so like right now it looks pretty beige because it's against my skin but if I put it next to a white it looks a lot more pink so I really like the color it's very pretty um, and I have eight 100 yard skeins of this so that should be plenty to do the shawl. It's not quite enough to do a sweater, which is why I decided to use it for the shawl because generally I would 
not want to dedicate a sweater's quantity of yarn to a shawl when I could use it for a sweater, but I have a little 800 yards of DK worsted. That's what this is, probably like a heavy DK light worsted. 800 yards is not quite enough for a sweater for me. So that's why I'm using it for the shawl. And I might even have a little bit left over, which is fine because then I can use it with the little bit left over of the other color that I have and maybe do some color work projects with it or make some DK socks or something. But yes, so that is this shawl, the Sunday morning shawl by Espace Trico. It's gonna have some baubles on the bottom. It's gonna be really cute, very big, very cozy. Very pleased with this. This I'm going through quite quickly. So I think this will probably also be done by the next time I see you. Okay, that's it for whips. Now we'll get into acquisitions. If that's not your vibe, totally fine. See you next time, thanks for being here. Um, but yes, into acquisitions. So for starters, I ordered the yarn from the Icelandic store for my Plotilopi. And while I was there, I was like, I'm already ordering yarn all the way from Iceland, then I might as well get a little bit more than I need because not only was the Plotilopi only $5 a ball, all of the yarn was more discounted than I've ever seen it in the US. So I bought some Letlopi for a project that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. So I bought Letlopi I, and it was probably like maybe only $3 a ball, which is about half as much. I think I at my local yarn store, it's like $6.50 or $7 a ball. So bought some Let Lopi, two colors. Um, this is the color, I think it's light gray, Heather, or I don't remember, but the NUP code is 0054. And then this is the black sheep Heather color, which is 0052. Um, it's kind of like a black, but it has a little bit of brown in it. So it's a little bit more nuanced than just like a flat black. Okay, garbage truck has moved on. Um, back to this. I bought these two colors, which are lovely contrast. You can't really see because of the, here we go, that's nice. Um, I bought them for the Badger and Bloom sweater by Ann Fensel. Um, I've been wanting to make this sweater since it came out, since I first saw the picture of it. It's really pretty. It's a colorwork yoke and then cuffs and hem kind of like the cathedral dome but it's like just a very simple stripey almost color work i will put a picture of it here so you know what i'm talking about um but i'm really really excited to make that and i think i'm going to cast it on in the new year like in january and maybe i'll try and have it finished for my birthday which is january 20th so yeah here are the colors you can kind of see super close up you can kind of see that there's a little bit of brown in this darker color it's not just like a flat black so yeah, I'm really happy with this. Um, I have five balls of the main color and three balls of the contrast, which should be plenty. I've never knit with Let Lopi before, but it's not too terribly scratchy. And it can't be any worse than Plo Lopi. So very excited about this, 100% wool from Iceland. Very excited to cast this on soon. Um, next up, I, along with my cone from Color Mart with this merino cashmere, not cashmere, merino mohair, wool mohair, oh my gosh, I can't speak, which by the way, I think I only paid like $10 for. It was a really good deal because Color Mart is a good deal and then they gave me like a bonus and the shipping was free and it was fast. So anyway, alongside that from Color Mart, they sent me a little sample pack because it was my first order. So they just sent me like a sample of some of the yarns that they carry. Um, so they sent me all of these little tiny baby skeins in all sorts of fibers. We've got linen and cashmere, alpaca, merino for you. Cashmere, cashmere, they sell a lot of cashmere. Cotton, cashmere, wool, cashmere, merino, cashmere, silk. Um, so I have all these little tiny baby skeins, which are so cute and I don't know what I'm gonna use them for, but they're so cute. I just think they're adorable and I would love to use them for something. So yeah, this is just a little sample of some of the yarns that they carry and they sent it to me free. So that was nice. Um, let's see. And then they also sent me this kind of larger mini skein of, I have no idea what this is, but it's really soft. It's like, I think it's probably like a wool, 
it's like a two ply there's like a single with a like a barber pole kind of look in it I don't know I have no idea what this is it's very soft it's very Christmassy I want to make something Christmassy with this maybe like a hat with this as a contrast color that could be cute something like this I don't know so we'll see but they sent me this it's probably like 20 grams or 30 grams very soft very lovely I just think it's really pretty and very festive so those were some more goodies from Color Mart um my next acquisition goes back to the lot that the tap of shoe wool came in. So as you know, I like vintage yarn. I just think it's fun to knit with. I like to use up things that are in the world already instead of buying new things. So I found some good vintage wool lots at Goodwill's recently. So I was looking at the Goodwill website, which I browse on occasion, and I came across a really great lot of yarn, vintage, mostly vintage yarn, and I bought it with shipping. It was about $30 US, maybe a little bit less. And I got tons of stuff. So I got eight skeins of this Pusilla tapestry wool, 100% wool, 800 yards of this. I got four and a half skeins of this Finnish wool. It's, oh gosh, it's called the uh, Ranulanka Vipella. That probably didn't, was not said correctly, but it's this Finnish wool. It's a fingering weight singles. The color's not my favorite, I will say. It's a little bit like split pea soup, baby puke, like a very vibrant yellow green. Um, but I think I'm gonna over dye this a darker green and then use it with a green mohair that I have. That's actually kind of a similar color to this. So that's my goal. I don't know if I can get there, um, but I'm gonna use this hopefully if I can get the right color out of it with a mohair to make the spot sweater by Ann Bensel, which is like these, it's really pretty. It's like geographic triangle color work pattern through it. It's gorgeous. Um, but you hold a mohair and a fingering weight together for that. So if I could use this, I would have more than enough. This is like a hundred, this is a hundred grams, 380 meters. So, and I have four and a half skeins of this. Um, I got this skein this is a this is spinnerin candor it's 100 percent wool four ounces which is a little bit more than 100 grams um it's just 100 percent wool undyed and uh, like a, a fingering weight fingering weight i don't know what else i wanted to say about that um i don't know how much yardage there is in this uh the the labels have better seen better days but I got that, which would be good for maybe like a ranunculus, a white ranunculus, that could be nice. Or, I don't know, you can never have too much fingering white yarn. Um, then I got a ball of Patton's Classic Wool Worsted, which I like a lot. This is not the same exact yarn as I'm using for my Seasons cardigan. This is, that's the Merino version, but this is still, they still carry this. I don't know if they carry this exact color. This is the color moss heather um so similar to the plotulopi color i used it's kind of like a greeny brown is that that's blown out a little bit but kind of accurate it's a very greeny brown um and i don't have a plan for this but i just like to have this in my stash because it's super useful for gift knits and stuff that you need to do really quickly i've made mittens with this i've made like little soft toys with this for babies um, it's great. So got a ball of this 100 gram ball, which is, uh, what's the yardage? 192 meters, 210 yards. So that's enough for a hat. Um, I got one skein of this, um, what's it called? Donegal Tweed Homespun by Taki Yarns, which is a yarn that that company still sells, but this is the vintage version of it. It's a singles, just a single ply twisted Irish wool um, in this really fiery red color. It looks more orange on the camera. I don't, that's a little bit truer to color. It's like a true Christmas red. And this is not usually a color I gravitate towards. I prefer more muted colors that are like a little bit softer, but I do think this looks really good with my complexion and it would make a nice Christmas hat as well. Here, there's a good contrast. You can kind of see this is more of like a, a darker red. This is like a 
blue red like a very bright red it's not as orange as it looks on the camera um but yeah i have this this would make a nice hat I just have one skein it's 100 grams it doesn't say how much oh 200 yards so similar weight to this like a worsted weight um so i've got that it's kind of nuppy and and lovely and then lastly i got just a bag of this persian like embroidery yarn it's super yarn mart los angeles special mill purchase persian wool 40 yards so it's like a fingering weight wool yarn that is again meant for embroidery but it would make work for socks or color work and i have like quite a few of this beigey color one of this how many just one no this is a different one so there's a brown like a that's like a mustardy yellow this is like a color that makes me think of inga from knitting traditions i feel like it's her favorite color these colors together make are just like very inga colors um so they're one of these one of these and then a number of these just two of these so these are the colors that i have of this which honestly together would make like a cute color work number i don't have enough for a sweater i don't think but yeah wait maybe i do 40 six times four is 24 so 240 yards of this color 40 yards of this color 40 yards of this color no 80 yards of this i don't know i have maybe enough for a color work sweater actually but yeah just all these like fun neutral colors like very warm autumnal colors so could be a color work sweater sorry for the rustling could be a color work sweater could be socks could be something don't have a plan for it but I will use it over the last year my stash has grown exponentially so i need to dial it back on purchasing because i have quite a lot to use already and i don't want it to just sit there unused so i need to get knitting um i have one more thing just one more which is this james and i went to canada i went to vancouver on friday it was a long weekend and we didn't have any plans so we drove up to vancouver it's only about a three-hour drive and just kind of wandered around saw a few places and then went to a yarn store right before we left because i wanted to look at a drops yarn there's a pattern i want to make from drops um and it uses drops wish yarn and drops is like impossible to find in the united states i don't know why but like there's nowhere that sells it in the us not online not in person but this um wet coast wools was the name of the store in vancouver they sold it so i went to just like look at the yarn and see if i liked it because i didn't want to order it without seeing it beforehand and i didn't love the drops wish it was not as soft as i wanted it to be um so i'm not going to use that for that project but then i was wandering around and i found this which is the briggs and little regal it's a canadian yarn um from new brunswick so the east coast of canada but um basically james made me buy it he said we couldn't go into the store because it was just him and i and the lady that worked there like and we were there for like 20 minutes and he's like i was like yeah i don't need anything we can go he's like no you need to buy something like we can't just leave here empty-handed so he had me buy this it's like a probably like a sport to a dk weight this is the color fur green which i just think is a really really pretty color um it's very me it's like a heathered it's got like blue and a bit of yellow it's a like a very multifaceted color which just has like a lot of depth to it um and it's kind of rustic but it's not terribly like i would wear a sweater in this it's not super scratchy to me um but i'm not that sensitive but yeah i just got one skein i figured i could make a hat with it um which i think it would make a really pretty hat but i also would really like to do like a color work sweater with this um i think it would it would look really good against like a white like a natural white uh, maybe the Phil is it the Philcolana is it Nordstrand the pattern that Caroline's Knits just finished it's like a really pretty it's a free pattern from Philcolana it's a turtleneck and then it just has like this band of color work that goes like across the arms and the chest I think it's really pretty and could look really striking in this green color like on a white background so I may do that um we'll see but yeah I really like this I'm excited to work with it and I'm glad I got to pick up a Canadian yarn while I was in Canada so that is also living in my stash at the moment so about half the things i bought i had a plan for half of them i don't 
we'll see. I'm also not afraid to like pass yarn on to friends. I have like cultivated a little knitting circle of friends that I go to school with and I'm happy to give them some yarn if they ever need it for projects. So just share the knitting wealth, spread the knitting gospel. So yeah, my voice is going a little hoarse because I feel like I've been talking for quite a while. I feel like this video is gonna be close to an hour long. So if you're still here, thank you for sticking around, appreciate it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say today. I hope you're all doing really well. I would love to hear what you've been knitting on. If you've been knitting as you've been watching this, I'd love to hear what you're working on. I just think it's really interesting to hear what other people are making, what yarns are using, um, if they're gifts, if they're for themselves any thoughts they have on patterns. So if you've ever made any of the patterns that I talked about today, I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, yeah, any pattern suggestions for any of the yarns that I showed? Happy to have those. And I think that's all I have for you today. So thank you again so much for watching. It really makes me happy that I just get to sit here and talk about yarn and that people actually watch it and I'm not just posting it on the internet and it's just sitting there by itself. So very happy to have you all making a little community here with me where we can talk about fun fiber things and just be friends. So don't feel, feel free to leave me a comment down below if you want to introduce yourself, a little chat. Um, I'd love to hear more about you since you just listened to me talk about myself for 45 minutes. Um, let me know what you're working on. Let me know what things you're excited for. I have more projects that I want to make besides the stuff I've talked about, but I've already talked for so long that I'm not going to talk about like more plans that I have. Um, but you can always go look at my Ravelry queue. My Ravelry and my Instagram are all just my name, which is in the down bar before, below. And you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry and connect with me anywhere that you please. So thanks again for watching. Really happy to have you. The garbage truck is here again, so I need to wrap this up. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up. Um, and share the love. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video.